Are you looking to use Zoom webinar for your next event or webinar or meeting and you're wondering how to get started and get set up? Or maybe you've been in Zoom webinar and something weird has gone on and you're not really sure where you might find that in your settings? Well, I'm gonna walk you through how to schedule a Zoom webinar and point out a couple of the nuances that I've experienced as an event producer using Zoom webinar for my clients. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do encourage you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I also am the co-host of the Better Events podcast. You can give it a listen wherever you listen to podcasts, and we have more free content there all about event production, event planning, running your own business, everything from creating a run a show to what makes an event successful to should you even host an event. We're also having exciting upcoming episodes all about event budgets, legal resources for your small business, and much, much more. So go give it a listen. All right, so maybe you are new to Zoom webinar or you've used Zoom webinar for years. There's always new features coming out and sometimes it can be a little tricky to understand exactly where certain settings are located, whether it's on the back end of Zoom, which I refer to a lot in my videos and I, that's like zoom.com, or if it's in your front end settings that you're gonna see once you're in the webinar or in the Zoom meeting. For starters, one of the things I do love to do as like a Zoom producer, an event producer, is I often like to be the one to actually set up the meeting or the webinar in my client's back end because then I can do this kind of checklist that we're gonna go through of looking at all of the settings. Not That's not always the case and that's okay, but I always find if I'm the one setting it up, I can do my double, triple, quadruple checking. Another workaround would be if your client is giving you the login after they've already set up the meeting or the webinar, you can then go in and actually check it on the back end. So today I did a video already, I'll link below and link above, that is a video on Zoom meeting, but today we're gonna talk about Zoom webinar. And actually, before I jump into that, I do want to remind you, you're not going to see uh, that option to schedule a webinar unless you have upgraded your pro account or maybe you're on an enterprise account because your company has your Zoom account. You will not even see that option. You'll just see text telling you that you need to upgrade your account to enable Zoom webinar. So this is an upgrade in addition to whatever your regular level of uh, Zoom accounts are, unless you are at one of those higher level accounts. I have a pro account. I had to pay for this upgrade and you can pay monthly or annually. Now schedule webinar, it's gonna look very similar to what we did with Zoom meeting. You have your topic. So again, this is like the title of your event or webinar. Again, this is attendee facing, they will see this. Same with the webinar description. It's a great place to add maybe two, three sentences about how awesome your webinar is or what people might learn. And then you have your when, so picking your date, your time, your duration, time zone. Again, the exact same as we just did with Zoom meeting. They also have the option to make it a reoccurring webinar. And similar to Zoom meeting, they've had an upgrade now where you can say the occurrence, how often you want it to repeat, does it have an end date, um, or you can uncheck that. Then registration, again, I'm gonna check that required just for demo purposes so you guys can see what pops up. You can leave that un, you know, unchecked and that means you're not gonna capture people's email address and name before they join. Authentication, this is another security feature that you're gonna see in Zoom webinar, different than Zoom meeting because here they have panelists and attendees. So you can require that they authenticate to join. This is really just that they have to like be signed into their Zoom. Uh, it does sometimes take an extra step that you, they wouldn't see at other webinars or meetings because it is kind of a security feature. So I'd recommend it if you have a really secure webinar, you have some private information you're sharing or important information that you really wanna make sure does not get out. I would check those two check boxes. If it's not really something as important, I rarely check both of those. Another security feature, you have your webinar password, so you can check this. If you wanna have a passcode, you can again set it to whatever you want, or you can let it be randomly generated. Uh, for the video, you wanna have your host on or off, host and panelists with on off camera. This is something you can control once you get in the meeting, so I, I will often just leave it on. Um, and then same with audio, you'll see this again, similar to Zoom meeting, you can have people join from their telephone, their computer, or both. And I often like to say both, just because it's nice to give people access no matter where their connectivity is. And now here's your webinar options. This is gonna look different than you remember from Zoom meeting. So here they have a Q&A feature. In webinar you have chat, but you also can have a Q&A um, icon that'll pop up on the bottom. So here's where you would enable it. You can also disable it. Uh, you can also, always check this. I'm gonna, this is like my one key takeaway from this video. If you could learn one thing today, it's gonna be that you wanna always have a practice session. 
Why? Because if you don't have this enabled, the minute you hit start webinar, your attendees are going to be able to join. There is no waiting room feature in webinar, unlike meeting. And so if you at all want to control when you open your virtual doors, I would make sure that you have a practice session. So please, please, please have this enabled if you are setting up a webinar, even if it's just yourself. That just lets you get situated, start sharing your slides, make sure you like all your settings, and then you hit start webinar and then that'll let all the attendees in. This is also an update here that we have. Uh, Backstage is now available. I am doing the upgrade that has Zoom events included, which includes Backstage. Super new feature, as you can see, it's called out that you can only join this if you have 5.10 or higher, meaning you've updated recently as of July 2022. Um, and this is really cool and I haven't gotten to play around with it yet, but supposedly there's a Backstage now. But minimum, you wanna make sure you have a practice session. Then farther down, you have enable HD video for screen shared video. This is just going to pull from your bandwidth higher if you're doing HD. If videos are a really important part of your webinar or your event, I would check this, but also make sure that you have a good internet connection. Um, enable host controls of a, a panelist appearance. This is kind of a cool one because you can now, um, as the host, upload your virtual background into Zoom webinar. And then if you check this, you should then be able to make sure that that person is using your background without having to email it to them and remind them to upload it to their Zoom. It just cuts down some of those steps. And then they do also have a really cool little like name tag feature, which looks like a lower third. So these are little like bells and whistles that Zoom webinar is doing to up their production value. So I would have that checked because it's just a really fun feature uh, for getting to, to increase the professional look of your webinar. Then you have request permission to unmute panelists. I usually leave that unchecked, but you're just going to be unmuting panelists. Um, making the webinar on demand. So this would be if you uh, were recording it and you automatically wanted it available for replay, you can again do this later. Automatically record webinar, that's again a great one. If you are someone who often forgets to hit record but know the minute you hit start webinar, it is recording. So you need to remind yourself usually to pause it until you're ready to get started. And then similar to Zoom meeting, you can approve or block entry from folks from different countries or regions. And then lastly here, just like we were in Zoom meeting, you can have an alternative host. Reminder, they do have to have a Zoom account that's associated with your account. They can't just be uh, someone who has a completely independent Zoom account. Zoom, I would love that feature, that would be great. But if you work for an organization, this is a great way to have somebody else who could then start that meeting in addition to yourself. Then once you've checked all your settings, you're gonna hit schedule. And similar down to Zoom meeting, if you just scroll down now, instead of saying start webinar, because I enabled that practice session, you're gonna see it says start practice session, which is essentially the same as like, I'm opening the actual Zoom webinar. It's the same link for my uh, panelists and my attendees. It just will only let my panelists in and it'll tell my attendees we haven't started the webinar yet, which is just a nice little feature. Then here you have your invitations. Uh, so if you were to invite any other panelists, so anybody who's speaking, here's where you're gonna do it in the invitation section. You're gonna edit and you're gonna just need the name and email address, mainly the email address. You probably could just use the first name, but you do need the email address of the person who will be speaking to give them that panelist link. Um, and then you can set your preview, whatever kind of name tag you wanna do or virtual background, which is kind of cool. And then you can invite your attendees so you can copy your invitation. It's just a registration link for folks. But if you are someone who has a really good marketing team, you can also do source tracking to figure out where people are coming to your webinar from. And your registration settings, you can have it automatically approve or manually approve. Again, automatic. If I sign up for your event, I get to go manually. I don't get to go until you hit confirm. And then you can control when you're closing registration. If people can join from multiple devices, again, same as Zoom meeting. And then here in, uh, in the invitation section, you can also manage your attendees. So once people have joined, you're able to then show who's approved, resend them confirmation emails, cancel their registration, all that fun stuff. Same thing, here's some email settings. So just talking about different, um, what contact email you wanna have listed. You wanna see what the invitation email to panelists look like. You can take that off if you're gonna be sending your own email communication. So you could disable that if you'd like. And this is just where you can kind of turn on and off these emails. There in branding, you're able to put up a uh, wallpaper here behind our video tiles. So this is like where it's black in Zoom webinar, Zoom meeting, you could actually customize that, which again is a newer feature, pretty cool for Zoom webinar. You can set the virtual background for everybody so that fits your event or your theme or your workshop. Design the different tags, which is fun. And then here's just the pretty simple, those are all kind of newer features. 
And then here's the more standard that we've seen before with Zoom webinar, but you can upload a banner for your invite page, your logo, you can add now speaker information to that page, uh, whatever theme, and then if you wanna have a survey that folks fill out after your event. Then here, similar to Zoom meeting, where you can fill out your polls, you'll be able to save those polls in here. If you wanna create a survey, here's where you can fill out your survey. And then if you want a little bit more um, specific Q&A features, which I will tell you all of these settings you can edit inside the webinar as well. So if you don't know the answer right now, totally okay. But you're gonna hit edit. And this is where you can actually then control, do you want to let folks have anonymous questions? Do you want attendees to be able to see only the questions you've chosen to answer? Do you want them to see all of them? If it's a little bit more of a social setting, do you want them to be able to upvote and or comment? Um, it really does depend what your goals of your event are, what your Q&A kind of flow is, what the theme is, who your audience is. So there's no one-stop solution, but just know you can control what attendees see. And then you can hit save. And then lastly, down here, you have your more, which has if you want to live stream. Uh, Zoom webinar does have this cool feature now where if it has reached capacity, meaning if you're paying for 500 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people, you can now have it that if I'm the, the 501st and you have a limit of 500 people, I will actually on that page, it'll tell me the, the webinar is full, but I can join them on the live stream. And here's where you can then embed uh, that you can remind people where to, where to watch and you can have that link would be embedded in there. Say I'm going to Facebook or YouTube or something like that. Now, Zoom doesn't automatically do that for you. You have to be doing the live streaming for them to redirect folks, but this is just a nice feature that I've actually been pretty impressed with that Zoom's come out with. Then my last thing I do wanna focus on here on the back end is just showing that if you wanna make a meeting instead of a webinar, it does let you convert it, which is just kinda of nice if you have a client who changes their mind. I'm gonna do a whole video talking about the benefits of webinar versus meeting, uh, and that'll be helpful, just kinda of the conversations that I have with clients when helping them choose. But this is just a time saver if you don't wanna to have to retype and check everything else that you already checked here. That's all I have for you folks. Thanks again for joining for another one of my videos on event production, Zoom, hybrid, and running your own business. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. And if you wanna learn more about what I do, please visit loganstrategygroup.com and find out more about my virtual hybrid and in-person event services. And I'll be back in your feeds again next week. Bye.